to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. We're going to get back into what is Christianity. This will be video number four. What a great topic. I know you should be at least somewhat curious and excited about learning about real Christianity. In other words, maybe something that's presented in these videos will stir something up about you to say, I could really include that particular perspective of my personal relationship with God into my life. And wouldn't that then include more testimonies? In other words, certain things that we understand about our wives or spouses what does it do but create more opportunity for shared experiences, testimonies, times together? And this is what will begin to happen as we continue in this series. Well, as you know, we always like to give the three reasons why we do these videos. Number one, very simply, that God would become more real to you, where he comes out of the pages of your Bible, personally gets into your life, where there are testimonies, where there are instances, God stories, you could say. Grace stories we like to talk about. We have a couple more today. In fact, we're starting to get a bunch of these, which is exciting because it means people are beginning to open their hearts and minds to the bigger picture of what is Christianity. Number two, faith becomes very simply applied when God is real. Think about your relationship to someone that you love on this earth, and you do respond to people all day long in faith. And think about your responses to someone that you love. Is it something that you work on on a regular basis? You will go around with great confessions about your, you know, your loved one or your parents and say, I believe my dad. I believe my dad. I believe my dad. I believe I receive. Well, no, we look at that and think, well, that's strange. Why wouldn't you just believe your dad once and just go about experiencing him constantly? Very interesting thought, isn't it? Maybe we're going to share some other things as we go down the road about Hebrews chapter 11. Some fresh insight about that I believe you're going to enjoy. Well, and also when faith becomes real like this, of course you're going to have testimonies. And that's what we're supposed to have. The Christian life is a Christian life of testimonies. You know, when the Bible says Jesus talking to them, go preach this word and I'll work with the word confirming it with signs and wonders following. What is the signs and wonders following but the testimonies of the truth of God's word received into the human heart? Isn't that beautiful? Well, we just thank the Lord for our time today and want to quickly get into Matthew 11, 27 to 30 in the Message Bible. It says, Now Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Well, isn't that an amazing, again, passage of Scripture that reveals so much about the heart of Jesus for a relationship with Him on a regular basis? Well, thank the Lord for that. Amen. And so we're going to go ahead in just a moment here and begin to share some thoughts. Romans chapter 8. Uh, 15 to 17 in the Message Bible. Just want to recap for a moment as we're getting back into some of these amazing and wonderful thoughts. What is Christianity? Well, we've helped you to see that right here in this passage in the Message Bible, there is a phrase that we do not want you to forget. That's why I'm going back to it as we get into some more things about the hearing, seeing, doing life. What do you mean? Well, we've been sharing the last couple of sessions and gotten over into how Jesus did life. Do you know how you do life is how you'll do faith? And if your faith isn't working, it'll go back to how you do life. That's right. What do you mean how you do life? Well, you know what? We'll even spend some more time explaining that later as well. But just very simplified, the perspective of an individual 
of what they consider to be reality will be the world that they will involve themselves in through actions, through words, through thoughts, through dreams, participation on a regular basis. You know, there is a scripture over in Matthew chapter 6 that kind of nails our hide to the wall. In the Message Bible, it says, where your treasure, well, the King James, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Message Bible says, where your treasure is, is where you will want to be and where you will find yourself being. In other words, if you took a 24-hour period of time and began to dissect it, where were your thoughts, feelings, and emotions? Where were your decisions being made from, the flesh and the world or the Spirit and God? And if you begin to actually become honest with that, you might find out maybe you don't love the Lord with all your heart. As much as you want to love him with all your heart, you would have to say just by the distractions of the day, the separation of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and choices to God, you might actually love the world a whole lot more than you think. Listen, this is not supposed to be harsh as much as it is the encouragement to the mind and heart to open and receive God's grace for the God-centered, what is Christianity? And we're going to say it right here, this phrase, and it's going to come like this. Verse 15 to 17 in the Message Bible, Romans 8 says, This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. Aren't you thankful it's not timid and grave-tending? And oh, by the way, I did have to watch my last video to kind of pick up where I left off. And wow, I was pretty intense. And I probably didn't think I was intense. And some of you may be laughing at me right now. But as I watched it, I thought, wow, if people didn't know me, they'd think, hmm, this guy's almost mad at me. No, 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 I'm not mad. I, I guess my intensity and passion for what we're preaching comes out a little bit, maybe a little bit too strong. So I'll try to be a little more happy and joyful in my face. Because what we want to show you is, what is Christianity? And what you're going to see right here is an exciting every day, I can't wait for my next experience with God kind of life. So it's not timid and grave tending. It says it's adventurously, there go, adventures in grace. Adventurously expectant, greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? Come on, think for a moment. It's so wonderful to have grandkids. We love our little Theo and our little Lucy. In fact, the little video came out today of her looking at her mama, my daughter, Drew, and she looked at her and she smiled and then she looked back like this and then she just rolled her eyes over and looked at her and it was like a new thing. <laughs> new thing she was doing. What a character. It was so fun. And you just think how much you just love them. Just like we love our girls, Allie, Drew, and Chloe. Just such beautiful girls, such wonderful hearted girls. Amen. And as much as we uh, love them right now in the present state as they are grown up and do, doing well, I also remember all those days, little girls. I can remember Allie specifically jumping on my back all the time. And I remember, you know, Drew just so quiet, and yet what an athlete she was. And Chloe, mischievous and yet so fun and would laugh and always want me to put her to bed and spend a couple of minutes rubbing her back, you know, which I did for all the girls. But all those interactions, I don't ever want to forget them. In fact, you know, when I see the girls today, even they'll come and sit by me and just say, Dad, you know, shoulders, you know, just because it was established long ago, we just had that interaction. Oh, it's so fun. What's next, Papa? What's next, Papa? Which seems to indicate what we just experienced obviously wasn't bad because I want some more. It's kind of like saying, was the ice cream bad? No, it was amazing. Could I have another scoop? You know, that's what it's like or supposed to be like with Jesus. And, oh, I know I just kind of revealed to you. I watched my last video and I thought, oh, man, Jim, you were so intense. And I can be that way. I can be intense. I can lock myself down on thought. And sometimes I don't, I'm not aware that people are around me. And I have to be careful because the same thing can happen even in my relationship with my wife sometimes. You're here, but you're not here. 
And I don't want that. It should be more freeing. Life with Jesus should be more expectant and fun and not so intense. Oh, I'm just so thankful, you know, that some of the intensity I've experienced in life that kind of drowns out the fun, that's not going to be me when I get to heaven. And the more I'm enjoying Jesus now, the lighter I'm becoming. Because you just don't care enough about so many things anymore. And we're not supposed to care about anything. So let's move on. I love this. God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are, father and children. And we know we're going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. And then, of course, it goes on saying just more and more amazing things. Well, we ended up, you know, over in the hearing, seeing, and doing life. And oh, how fun that has been. We were over in John, and then we're going to go right again to John chapter 3 and just get back a little bit in what we were seeing a moment ago. John chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, and especially verse 13, I want to just read this here because, you know, Jesus is spending a lot of time with Nicodemus. And wow, what a revelation when you look at the life of Jesus speaking with Nicodemus. You know, I love the chosen. And when it showed those interactions of Jesus and Nicodemus, you know, that brought a lot to life. I mean, Nicodemus really put himself out there on one hand to humble himself, to go to Jesus and have such heartfelt questions. I don't understand. I don't really get it. And Jesus said, come on, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. How can you go back into your mother's womb? And he said, you're not understanding. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. It's like the wind that goes back and forth and you really can't see it, but you can see what it does. So is the spirit of God. And Nicodemus still struggled. I don't understand these things. And Jesus said, you know, if I'm telling you earthly things to give you a connection to spiritual things and you don't get it through the earthly things, what if I just kind of went right to the spiritual things? It would be so far over your head. And then he says right here, if you're unable to understand and believe what I've told you about the natural realm, what will you do when I begin to unveil the heavenly realm? No one has risen into the heavenly realm except the Son of Man who also exists in heaven. Well, I think we can look at even the King James and see that there's some pretty cool things that that reveals. He says, no one has ascended to heaven but he who came down. Now for a second, think of this like a yo-yo. No one has gone up but he that came down, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And if you look at this correctly, you'll see Jesus and you'll ask the question, where are you? Are you up or are you down? It says you came down, but you've ascended, but you're on the earth, but you live in heaven. And that's exactly right. Put those pieces together and you know what you come up with? Jesus said the secret to Christianity, the secret to my life is, while I'm living in a physical body on this earth, or you could say, while I'm using a physical body, I am living and partaking out of heaven. I am fellowshipping with my Father on a regular basis from my spirit to my spirit. And my flesh is connected to this earthly world. But I don't let my flesh rule me. My spiritual relationship always makes my flesh follow along. Come on, like the Pied Piper, your flesh will follow a spiritual relationship from your spirit to God, where you're hearing him and you're seeing him and you're enjoying uh, a relationship, fellowship, and tangibility. All right, let's go a little further. John chapter 3, toward the end of the chapter, verse 31 in the New King James Version. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. Now, if you stop right there, we'd have to just kind of correct some of the old religious mentalities that people give. They'll say, that's right. See, Jesus is experiencing what he's experiencing because he's Jesus. Now, you can't experience what he's experiencing because you're not Jesus. Now, the whole Pauline revelation just literally took the lid right off the pot so we could look in and see that the great mystery of the church is now Christ comes to live in you and brings his glory for you to become familiar with and use at your will. 
Jesus used the glory and brought manifestation of healing and deliverance from devils, and he caused multitudes to be fed with a little lunch. He turned water into wine, and so on and so forth, interrupted a funeral procession and raised the dead. Come on, when you look at what Jesus did with the glory, oh my goodness. That's what it means to be in Christ. So when you're in Christ, you're no longer born of this earth. You say, really? I kind of feel like I am. Well, you're not. <laughs> Amen. Even John chapter 1 tells us, that when you receive him to them, he gives power to become a son of God, even to them that believe on his name, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man. In other words, he took away our identity. How the flesh is identified with your parents, your heritage, how you're identified with the will of man in the earth and the will of the flesh in the earth. Once he took all of that away, then he said, but you were born of, and that word of is a word of possession. That means you are now a possessor of the God kind of existence and life. <clears throat> Aren't you glad about that? He said, you were born of God. Now that's how you, well, let's think of it this way. From the moment you're saved, you can't go back to judging yourselves according to the flesh, the way you used to. Now, everything must be judged according to your spiritual connection with God. And that's going to eliminate a lot of drama. Are you hearing me? Come on. These reality shows are nothing but drama, and I refuse to watch them. Why? Because it's drama. I don't need any more help uh, with this world convincing me to buy in to the drama of life. The more you buy into the drama of life, the more you consider that a reality. And if you consider that a reality, guess what? You'll start making choices in that world of reality. You'll start talking in that world of reality. You'll see pictures in that world of reality. And you'll follow it like a, like a hook in a, a pig's snout. And, and you'll just follow it down the wrong road. Go to the book of Proverbs and you see how it talked about the prostitute and the young man who just followed along like he had no other choice. Wrong reality. We want to walk in the reality of the Spirit. So this verse of Scripture is tremendous, and we're going to have to actually get right back into it the very next time that we come. I wanted to read one of the grace stories, just so really, really good. It says here, um, made a comment on Facebook group regarding a product I felt would benefit my husband. Two people asked to bless us with different products. To my absolute delight, something I had wanted regarding the company was included. Thought it would be one item. I guess it was more than that. Second story is, my dog had to be changed on his food and the vet had a bag return that was practically full and he gave it to me. He said, well, come on, Jim. A, a vet gave you dog food. Listen. As you begin to acknowledge the smallest and most wonderful, what people would call coincidences and lucky experiences, which are just simply God's influence in your life, that when you invite him by acknowledging the smallest of things, Drawing yourself to him and, and him to you in this relationship that becomes now tangible. It's no longer just somebody else's testimony in the Bible. It becomes your own testimony of walking with him and talking with him. You will then set the course on your life where God will have freedom to invade your world and bring blessing of the smallest of things and of the greatest of things. And by the way, there is no greater thing for God and lesser thing for God. It's just how you look at it. Because receiving dog food and having almost a full bag given to you of exactly what you needed to have is no different in the connection and the receiving from the Lord than a cancer 
disappearing in someone's body right now as that cancer and the cells that are in your body crumble, die, wither, disappear, and are no longer in your body. In the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, that tangibility to Him is the exact same thing. And as you begin to delight in something as simple as the dog food, what will happen is, is God will work in every area the exact same way. It'll be nothing more than a delight for Him, and for you, it'll become that expectant, wonderful, adventurous life of what's next, Papa. You'll almost want to say, are you kidding me? That was awesome. Can we do it again? Well, I want you to go to jimhockaday.com. You can look on our website and definitely find the email, which is jhmi at jimhockaday.com, where you can email us and let us know your grace stories. You can go to Adventures in Grace YouTube channel and subscribe. Bring other people, especially right now during this session of What is Christianity? It'll open their eyes. And of course, we have Jim Hockaday Ministry Facebook page that you can follow. We really enjoy that you are tuning in to what we're doing. We look forward to seeing you again.